Hello there, welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going to be going over how the setup has changed in Pico OS because uh, it, it's pretty damn good. Now, this is the Hyperland ISO, the standard, because, well, I don't have any NVIDIA drivers inside of a VM. So uh, we're going to take a look at how everything functions and works. Okay, It's nice and big, too, which is nice. Works. So we're going to install this real quick and run through as much as we can. We're going to agree to that. You know, I don't really like using AI for most things, but when you have to kind of scroll, maybe you should make AI write you a nice ULA that goes over uh, everything uh, that you need. And keyboard, English US. I like that the installer now scales to the full display, which is nice. All right, automatically partition this drive. Look at that. So you can manually partition, you can do whatever you want, and then you can automatically partition the drive, select the drive that you want to partition, done, advanced options. So you're actually able to choose what you want. Uh, I do not want a separate home directory, and I'll go with ZRAM, why not, right? There we go. And for the boot, uh, you can set compatibility mode for MSI motherboards. This uses boot 64, so it ends up booting a lot quicker than it used to. I use this specifically. And then you got timeout. So you can set 20, 5, 0, whatever you want. I'm going to set it to 15. That's a good uh, thing. And you can also skip section and boot up automatically. You know, that's, uh, that's pretty fun. So there you go. Now, the reason I use XFS is because um, ButterFS has been having problems lately. I'm not a fan of it, but uh, XFS is speedy, fast, efficient, and I've never had an issue with it so far. So I'm going to keep with that and hope for the best. So this is the installation. The installation is as simple as that. Very nice, well put together installer. I'm glad they didn't use the same installer that every other distro uses. Uh, Calmers or whatever you want to call it. I, I hate that installation method. It's annoying. It's slow. The way that it unpacks files slowly. Sure, it has the ability to grab them live, but, you know, we're already done. That's how efficient and amazing uh, Pico OS is, and I'm very impressed. I think this is probably going to be my new favorite uh, go-to for, like, new users and they ask which distro to use i'm probably going to be uh mentioning pico os instead because of the whole setup and how everything works because it just does so much of a better job so this is the first setup and this will probably improve in time so we gotta let's start and it's not seeing our internet it's probably going to take a second to connect to it by the way look at all this left the phone nifty all right, we're gonna hit next and gonna enter the name. Gonna enter the host name. Okay, okay. Gonna enter the password and the other password. Uh, the red text over here, not a fan of it. Instead, it should, should just show a red uh, dot next to each thing that needs to be filled out. And once you fill it out, the red dot goes away. I think that would be a little bit better. And it also allows you to update your system the first time that you jump in, which is honestly uh, what all distros should do, especially Fedora. Fedora should just have this in its first setup. That would be really cool. Or just use Fedora everything and bypass it altogether. But again, uh, I'm super impressed with the way they've handled things, how they're making this easy for beginners more than any other distro I've seen, I've seen before which is nice. Look at this, essential hardware. You can install your NVIDIA drivers from right here, no matter which ISO you choose. Or if you have dual GPUs like me, you can, there you go. Now you can skip this. Installing codecs, check. Look at that. And look, it goes quick, it's nice. It would be even more nice if it ranked the mirrors. Uh, for the closest CDN, but this is the best that we get. So, uh, honestly, if, if you guys can change it so it ranks mirrors in the very beginning after it connects to the internet, 
and then you go through things, installation would be much quicker. But it wasn't that big of a download, so I guess it didn't really matter. Would be nice, though. Hmm. Look at it go. Look at it go. Now, another change I could suggest here is a progress bar at the bottom. And it basically is showing which file is being installed instead of constantly overlapping like that. I think that would be cool. And this is the best part. This installs Steam, Lutris, I think Heroic, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So we hit this. It's going to install everything needed to game right out of the box, which is absolutely beautiful. And you can skip this if you don't need this. If you're not a gamer, uh, you don't need this. And you can literally just bypass it and have a very uh, minimal install, which I'm super impressed about. So yeah, see, this is where a progress bar and just showing each individual thing would come in handy because this goes all over the place. Or if we put this into an individual header and it would go through like a list, that would be interesting. And that's it. And then you just reboot. And you got the spinning egg thing. It would be cool if the spinning egg thing hatched right when the boot finished. I think that'd be nifty. But that's probably not possible, maybe. Or it could be a hatching process where it just starts to wiggle, it hatches, and then the boot's complete. Uh, na, 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 na. They have their own login screen. This is custom built. This is a greeter. I believe it's made with Quickshell. See, there's a button here to do all your stuff. You can change the wallpaper from whatever that is. People tend to like that, but I'm not a fan of it. There's your wallpaper stuff. You can change the appearance. You can put a 12 hour clock. Uh, you can do display settings, blah, blah, blah. Like all of that. That's pretty cool. So let's log in. And here we are, of course. Uh, and I've already showed this off in a video technically, but the rebuild's a little bit better. So I don't need to go over that. All I wanted to do was to go over everything that was necessary and see out of the box heroic game launcher you got your lutris you got a, you got your media player there's the device manager you got a kernel manager you got an update manager proton plus out of the box steam you got another package manager here which is nice you got the welcome thing in case you want to go install a whole bunch of stuff there's not that much installed it's a very very minimum uh, minimal installation which makes me very very happy anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video pico os is on a whole other level beyond nabora at the moment and well beyond cache os in terms of gui applications ease of use out of the box and more and it just it's constantly growing and i am very very impressed with the developers and everything that they're doing and uh honestly i don't i don't think i could be any happier uh but i do i do enjoy this like i want to see what it what it put in for the displays real quick because i think it's just the normal monitors right Ugh, why is vim installed I have one other issue. Please install a text editor. Vim is not worthy. Install a text editor. That's all. Have a great day. Hope you guys subscribe if you're new here. Uh, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about Pico OS. It's changed probably since the last time you used it. So if you don't have a current experience, uh, my suggestion is to get one. It's time to update your experience on Pico OS because no, it's not having any growing pains. No, it does not have any stability issues. Uh, I have it installed on an actual NVMe. I used it for a video a while ago. It's absolutely stable. It's beautiful. It's beginner friendly. And it's got cats and chickens and stuff. Yeah, there's a cat right there. See it? And look, there's a, there's a ninja chicken. Bye.